Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 606 of The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Before we get started, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you would please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Also, all past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. You can go there and check out all of the episodes. If you're new to the show, you've missed a few hundred actually 605. It's never too late to get caught up, folks, right? Also, I want to remind you, in about 10 minutes, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. All you have to do is listen in a little bit. We try to make the questions easy because we know it's early in the morning for most of you, but uh, you do have to listen a little bit in order to win the flowers. If you'd like to pre-program that phone number into your phone now for later, it's 614-459-9769. 614-459-9769. Again, don't call now, but uh, in about 10 minutes, we will give you the question of the day, and you'll have a chance to uh, call in and win. Okay. All right. So as I mentioned a couple times on the show so far, uh, you might remember that I have an associate now. It's Dr. Kenny Edmonds, and he's been on the show a couple times. And I mentioned we're probably going to have him back because I want you all to get to know him because I'm thinking that... You may come into the office, either might choose to have him because he's better looking than me, or uh, I might be tied up suturing somebody and he may be asked to do your periodic exam for me or maybe take out a stitch or do something. And so we've gotten to know him, but we want to continue the process. So, all right, Dr. Edmonds, so tell me, tell me again, you graduated or you finished dental school on what date? On May 3rd of this year. Okay, May 3rd. So now that you've been practicing for two months... What's been maybe the biggest surprise that you have found about being a dentist? Honestly, one of the biggest surprises to me was talking about dentistry to patients because in school I'm surrounded by other students and faculty and we kind of speak the language of dentistry, right? And know right, exactly, right, right. Know exactly what we're talking about all the time. And it, it's a big adjustment to have to explain things to patients and help people understand what I'm trying to communicate in, in words that they understand. Right. And it's funny you would mention that because I actually have planned a show. I don't know if it's going to be next week or the week after. But I decided a good topic for a show would be breaking down those words and helping people understand when we say crown, they hear cap, right? Right. And <laughs> when we say, you know, you have, uh, that there are caries on that tooth or there's decay or something, we, we need to be able to say, oh, I mean, it's a cavity. That's, that's a common thing. It's not anything funny or weird. Exactly. So, uh, in fact, I was wondering if when we first met, if you thought maybe I didn't know that they were the gingiva, it was the gingiva that maybe I, I'm calling it the gums because that's what people refer to it as, right? No, that's exactly right. And a couple of times we've been working together and I've said something and uh, you kind of look at me funny and you, then you say, oh, yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. Just you've been working with patients so closely and you really understand what they need to hear and how to communicate with them that sometimes I, I come across as a little too scientific. So I'm just trying to tone it back a little bit. So you, you can't say an M-O-D-B-L composite to a patient because they don't know what you're talking about, right? Right. I'm throwing all these numbers around and patient, uh, you know, someone's in the chair thinking, what's he talking about? Now, once you enlighten them, then they do kind of know. They're, they're actually uh, pretty smart these days. They understand. It's just the, that wording. So, But I will say, here's one of the favorites. People refer to, they call it my bridge. And more often than not, they're not talking about what we think of as a bridge. We think of a bridge as something that's cemented in the mouth, right? You ground one tooth down over here, one tooth down over there, and you put a fake one in the middle. What do you think they're talking about when they say they're bridge? I honestly don't know. <laughs> they're partial. 
Oh, okay. So yeah, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have put that together. Yeah. So they call it their bridge. I don't know why. Maybe because it bridges the gap, but that's not what we call it. Right. Yeah. Okay, so I am going to do a show like that at some point and explain, you know, I guess I shouldn't do it all now or, w- or I won't have to do the show later. But, for example, uh, I'll do one more. So, for example, we refer to this procedure we call endodontic therapy. Right. Root canal for everyone else. <laughs> exactly. And when I was in college in uh, English, I, was, I knew I wanted to be a dentist. And so when I was asked to write an essay, I wrote it about a root canal. Yeah. And and guess what? I got dinged on the uh, paper by my professor because it's not a root canal like everybody calls it. It's endodontic therapy. Yeah, exactly. You know, and things like that when you say them so frequently in school and uh to your colleagues, it can be really challenging to kind of transfer that over and and learn the language of uh, everyday people. So what about the dentistry part? Has there been any surprise with that? I mean, the materials, they're pretty much the same that you're used to. Uh, You maybe have help now that you didn't have in school, right? You get an assistant now, right? That's exactly what I was going to talk about is that in school I did everything by myself. I've, I've got suction in there. I have patients holding suction on the side of their face. And having an assistant is incredible, but it's also a big learning curve for me because I'm just so used to grabbing what I need. I'm not used to sharing or handing things off, so that's been a big adjustment. Yeah, I think I'm still getting used to that. They're all, they're like hold their hand out, and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Here, you can have this. They just want me to keep my head right where it needs to be and not move, and I'm I'm here moving my head around trying to reach, so I, I'm learning. And they want you to because they're there to help, and they enjoy their job, and they want us to know that what they can offer us, which is to make everything go smoother for us and the patient, right? Right, exactly. So now in school, you didn't work with an, an EFTA. Now, an EFTA, for the people that don't know, which could also be in my next show, right, is Expanded Functions Dental Auxiliary. Okay, so for the longest time, I thought it was Expanded Functions Dental Assistant, but it's not because the dental assistant simply assists the dentist and EFTAs can work alone. So what's your experience been with EFTAs since you've graduated? It's been really amazing. They're able to do fillings for patients with just incredible talent and skill and get things to look just beautiful. And it's a it's a huge advantage for us because we can spend time doing things that, you know, take a little more training and understanding to get done while an EFTA takes care of getting fillings in place. And I, I've seen a lot of beautiful work from all the EFTAs here. Awesome. Yeah. yeah and it, it, they do. They love their job, right? They just can't wait. Uh, they're like, it's not drawing the short straw. It's who gets to do the next yeah. filling. Exactly. Yeah. It's, hey, don't steal that filling from me. I want that one. And that's who you want working on you, folks, people that want to do it. Okay, now, have you had much interaction yet with people when it comes to what the cost of treatment is and what their insurance is going to cover? I'm just curious what your exposure has been on that. Yeah, fortunately, the office staff here is very knowledgeable and knows exactly what everything is you know, going to cost a patient and how insurance is going to play a part. I've been doing a lot of learning about how that works and uh, it, it's really enlightening because at, at school, uh, patients come in and you never even hear about finances, period. It, it's yeah, just, which is not good, right? Right. So when, when you recommend things to patients, you don't know how much that's going to cost them. And that's, that's a disadvantage to the patient because if you have an understanding of what things cost and what insurance is and isn't going to cover, you can give a more accurate plan. You can present to them a more accurate treatment plan to their needs. Right, because you can say, okay, now, John, you know, we could take this tooth out and do an implant, but and that would cost X number of dollars. But if you want us to save it, it would cost less, you know, that sort of thing. Exactly, and uh, you always want to present to the patient the very best option for them, and that's how I'm always going to treat patients. But it's important to understand when people have difficulties or, you know, maybe they're going through a a hard time where they can't, quite afford what the best possible treatment is, you're able to give them some alternatives and explain, hey, this is a lot more cost effective, this is going to save you a lot of money and help them that way. Right. That Some of those may not last the same number of years, but it buys them time, right? Yeah, exactly. If you aren't able to afford an implant per se, you know, we, we could maybe go with something a little less expensive that won't last as long, or we can do something that just gets you by until you're able to get an implant in place and there, there are a lot of variations like that uh, with dental care. Yeah, so what I tell people is, okay, you're missing a tooth here and we need to get a replacement because if we don't, 
the teeth around it, the ones that bite on it, and the ones beside it are going to shift, right? Exactly, yeah. So we have to do something. So that could be an implant. It could be a bridge, that, like we talked about. What are the other options? I think uh, there's, there are two. Yeah, we can do a partial. Which comes out at night, a removable partial denture. Removable partial denture, or, you know, you can leave it alone. Or do a space maintainer. Yeah, if that's, especially if you're thinking about doing something else down the road, and even if you're not, it, it's a great option for you know, holding things in place and uh, keeping things ready for the next step. And we can also make a temporary partial that's even less expensive than the real partial. We call it an interim partial. That's cheaper, yeah, flipper. Yeah, yeah some people, yeah, know it as a flipper. Yeah, that's the least expensive there, yeah. Now, the reason it's called a flipper, folks, is because it's usually a front tooth where somebody's had it knocked out playing sports or something or a bicycle accident, and it has one tooth in the front, and there's plastic on the roof of the mouth. And if you put your finger on the one fake denture tooth and pull down, it makes the plastic flip down and back. Yeah, yeah that's a... It's a common thing to play with when you first go, get one in like that. You can just move it around. I did have a patient come once and ask me, he goes, I was thinking about getting one of those flappers. <laughs> you do flappers. I've never heard of a <laughs> flapper, but we can put some wings on you if you want. <laughs> so I said, you mean a flipper? <laughs> so, so anyway, yeah. Uh, okay. So it looks like we probably should do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. And so if you've been listening, you remember that one of the first things Dr. Edmonds said when I asked him what was new, you know, now that he's out of dental school, it was the part about talking money. No, talking language, understanding the wording. Yes. That would be yeah. one, right? The other was t you didn't have to talk money. Right. And then EFTAs. And then an EFTA, how cool it is to have an expanded functions dental auxiliary and what a good job they do. All right, you might want to remember those because uh, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. But before we do, we'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. And the question of the day is, which of the following was not one of Dr. Edmund's biggest challenges when transitioning from dental school to private practice? Was it A, talking to patients in words they understand, B, talking money with patients, which he didn't have to do in dental school, C, working with EFTAs, which are expanded function dental auxiliaries, because he had to do everything himself in dental school, or D, understanding how to do clinical dentistry? Okay, now remember, it's kind of a trick question. Which of the following was not one of his biggest challenges, okay? All right, so the winner is going to receive free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The number to call, 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it, though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hey, but don't take the time. Hi, I'm Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. Look for my smile on the big screen this summer, courtesy of Dr. Kavitko. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile radio and road show. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers, all in my office. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Joe 
Hannah, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavico and Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavico for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavico, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko and Associates today, 614-262-9588. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. All right, we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavicko's question of the day. During the break, my producer took the phone calls. Tell me who is the winner of Dr. Kavicko's question of the day. Who had the correct answer, which is D, understanding how to do clinical dentistry. The winner of the free flowers today is Sarah in Columbus. Congratulations to our winner. Thank you so much for listening, for calling in. And for those of you that didn't win this week, please try again next week. Okay, if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 606 of The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. I'm here with Dr. Kenny Edmonds. He is my new associate, and we are trying to get him introduced to you folks so that if you come in, you'll feel like you already know him. And so we're asking him what it's been like to be out in the dental world, actually a practicing dentist rather than a dental student. And so uh, he wasn't really prepared for this. I'm just kind of throwing him some curveballs here. And so tell me about the procedures that you've done so far, and are they similar or the same procedures that you have done in dental school? Yeah, I was fortunate in that at Ohio State I got to do a lot of dentistry. And so I've, I've done quite a bit of dentistry since graduating. But And by the way, that's important for people to know. Your first patient out in the real world wasn't your first patient. Right. I've been treating patients for over two years now, so I, I've seen a lot of patients. I've done a lot of dentistry. Uh, I think the biggest changes are the materials and the instruments that we have here. They're the same quality as Ohio State, but there are some differences in what we're able to use. For example, we use lasers in this office to treat teeth that don't necessarily need to be numb, um, and that's that's been a huge benefit to a lot of patients I've seen so far and something that we didn't do in school. Well, okay, that's correct, although I want to make sure people know there, you, we still numb your tooth, we just don't have to use a needle. Right, you're, <laughs> you're not feeling anything. They're just It's a different than the, tip, than the typical route of using a needle in, in your gums to get the tooth numb. And you've actually experienced it, right? We did that earlier today. Tell me about it. That's right. For the first time, I had a cavity filled using the laser instead of the typical method of the needle getting the tooth numb and then using a drill. And it was great. I mean, I, I didn't feel anything. There was one point where it did start to get sensitive. But that wasn't when I was using the laser, was it? I got, I got brave and I got the drill out. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> it was a really good experience because the sensitivity I started to feel wasn't bad. I, I just, you know, my body reacted. Dr. Kvitko noticed. He switched back to the laser, was able to finish everything up, got the filling done. It was fast, easy, uh, almost completely painless, and I would take that any day over half my jaw numb for the rest of the day. Yeah, yeah, and I think we actually did two teeth. We did two fillings on one and one on the other, so you got three fillings, and you weren't numb. You were able to function. We did that very first thing in the morning, and normally you wouldn't have wanted to have a filling first thing in the morning because you had a slate of patients to treat, right? That's right, yeah. You don't want to not be able to talk and <laughs> stuff tripping out your mouth, drooling. <laughs> so if your job requires you to speak in front of a group or speak on the phone or something and you had to worry about how you scheduled your visits to the dentist, well, if you're able to use the laser or we're able to use the laser, and it's called the Solea, by the way, S-O-L-E-A. Not every laser allows you to have fillings done with no anesthetic, but this one does, so it's pretty cool. So the laser, what else? Is there anything else that's uh, new and different? Working with implants is pretty new for me. Uh, we did a lot of implant restoration in school where patients would come in that already had implants placed either by an oral surgeon or a periodontist, and we would restore the implant. But being 
here at Dr. Kavitko's office has been really eye-opening for me because Dr. Kavitko places a lot of the implants in the bone, and that's been something new for me. And so I've been learning that process and seeing how that works, and it's been really fascinating and helps kind of round out the whole process for me and understand more about what needs to go into making an implant work before we even think about the crown. Yeah, well, the way I look at it is if I were to send a patient to a surgeon to have the implant placed, they would place an implant in a perfect spot for where the bone might have the greatest contours and the greatest uh, depth and width. But they wouldn't necessarily be thinking about what's that crown going to look like. Maybe they are, maybe they're not, but I'm not sure, you know. So when I place one, I'm thinking about how's that crown going to look? Do I want it to be a little bit more towards the cheek or a little bit more towards the tongue or do I want it to be a little closer to the tooth than the old tooth was? I'm just pre-planning how's it going to, you know, you've seen me because I'll say we want to go deeper because it's a front tooth, right? Yeah, Yeah. there are a lot of times when, you know, you make small adjustments because you know exactly where the crown's going to be because you're going to be the one putting the crown on there. It's a lot different than when uh, someone else is doing the crown and you're just making sure the implant's in the right place. Right, and the surgeons do a great job, but uh, there's something, there's nothing like controlling all of the steps. Surgeons are fantastic, and uh, so are periodontists, uh, but there is something to be said for understanding the whole process and being able to know start to finish what needs to take place in order to be successful. Yeah, so implants, and then what about, uh, were you exposed very much to the sedation, that like what we do here? We do have, Ohio State is actually one of only four or five universities in the nation that has a dental anesthesiology program. You can become a dental anesthesiologist there, huh? Yes. After dental school? After dental school. It's a two-year residency following dental school, and uh, I I did get exposed to a lot of the, the residents and watched a few of the sedation cases. However, I didn't personally take part in any of that aspect of, of care. So it's been really cool seeing that whole thing play out from start to finish, planning the medications, getting a patient ready, doing the IV, and watching that whole process take place. That's been really fascinating. Yeah, like the one we did today where that surgery, there's no way we could have worked on that woman if she hadn't been sedated, right? Yeah, not a chance. That's There are a lot of things that I just, uh, yeah, I can't imagine tr- attempting something without sedation. It just would be, it wouldn't be possible. Yeah, yeah, really cool. Okay, so it looks like it's time for us to go to a break. Hang with us. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, here with Dr. Kenny Edmonds, and we'll be right back. You can take me as I am, not just a little bit. I don't know who to be. I'm a paper cup, baby, of the sea. I know you see it too, because... You're too much for me. Yeah. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? We're back. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kvitko. I'm here with Dr. Kenny Edmonds. He is my new associate, and we've been talking about some of the things that he has found interesting, the difference between being a dental student and being a dentist out in the real world. And so I guess one of the nice things about being out in the real world is no more quizzes and, and no more tests, right? I still nightmares. I wake up, just sweat. 
thinking, you know, I haven't studied for that final, or yeah, something's coming up next week. So it's a weird but wonderful feeling. Dentist, dental school is intense. Would you agree? There was one point during the second year of dental school where I averaged, I think, one and a half midterms a week, and there were some weeks where we'd have three or four tests. And th- these are the kinds of tests, you know, you need like a week or two weeks to study for, and there were times where I just didn't know how it was all going to get done. Somehow it got done. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, I don't know how yours was, but in our fourth, I think it was the last quarter of the sophomore year, we had, everyone in my class, we had 13 finals in four days. Did you ever have anything like that? Yeah, the, that's that's the second year now is the one where they do all of the exams. Uh, they do all the classes, and so you have all these exams right at the same time. But one thing people don't realize about dental school that's different from medicine or law school is it's not just book work. So if you're, if you're going to become a lawyer and you're you're in law school i'm not saying that's not hard it's very difficult very demanding that that's what my dad ended up doing as a lawyer you're in books all day and you're memorizing and you're taking tests dentistry is that but also you're working on your hand skills you're learning how to prepare teeth for crowns and to do fillings and extractions and you get tested not only on what you know, but also how you perform. And it's it's very stressful. It, it can be the kind of thing that's really hard to balance. Right. And it's really hard for people to grasp that, isn't it? It's just, and it doesn't matter how smart you are, if you can't prepare a tooth for a crown properly, you're not going to graduate. Every year there are students who come to dental school who've never had a B, never had an A minus in their life, you know, and they're just per- perfect 4 students. And then they get to their first practical where they need to either prepare a cavity or get a tooth ready for a crown and they fail and it's it's because you know it's a whole new kind of learning and it's a whole new process and not everyone gets it on their first try it, it can be very challenging so uh, and you know you would think they just have people that are good with their hands but those not everybody is good with their hands has the brain power to do all of these courses and tests and quizzes and all that yeah it's incredibly demanding you don't think about it uh, but it it requires a lot of you physically and mentally they, uh, in dental school, I will say this, they work really hard to try to drum into you perfection, right? Yeah, you, you learn the ideal, the absolute ideal, and that's what you're graded on. And then, you know, you, you learn, okay, well, here are some things that maybe change when we, we throw in the imperfections of real life. Right. I mean, yeah, I think the plan is, is they know there's going to be a little bit of drop-off after school or if you have a, a day when the patient's fidgety or they were gagging or something and not ideal situation to work under and so if the end result is uh, not as good as perfection it's still really 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 good right exactly some things that wouldn't pass in a dental school class are are just perfect for an actual patient because you know it's it's the way that they are and the way that you're able to do it and we never cut corners but sometimes we have to you know, make compromises because of the way that the tooth presents itself or the person presents themselves. Yeah, and so here's an example. You have a gagger, and it's hard to get x-rays on people who tend to gag, and so we will accept we have what's called external bite wings in our in our cone beam scan machine. I don't like them. They're not as good. They're not quite as clear, but it's better than nothing, and you don't want to gag the patient, right? Yeah, exactly. Sometimes it, you have to make compromises like that for the patient's benefit because it's not worth, you know, throwing up everywhere to get a different picture. And if the cavity is big enough, you're going to see it on an external bite wing. Yeah, we're not going to miss anything. We're just going to make it a little more comfortable for the patient at the expense of maybe going against the perfection that they teach in dental school. Exactly. Okay, before we go any further, I want to apologize for the audio. Some of the audio has been pretty messed up, and I apologize for that. It was not the station. I believe it's my microphone. It's either my microphone or my wire, but uh, I will get it straightened out. And again, I apologize It was not this station's fault. It was mine. (laughs) But it looks like that's all the time we have today. Obviously, we want to continue this because there's so much to talk about, right? Dentistry is huge. There's always something to talk about. I've been doing it 39 years. I have never been bored. Ever, ever, ever. How many people can say that about their profession? I don't know, but not very many, I would bet. I bet it'd be in a minority. I'm sure it would be. Okay, Doc. Well, thanks so much for joining me today. Really appreciate it, and I'll see you at work tomorrow. All right. Great to be here. See you next time. Okay, that is all the time we have today. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at Dr. Kavitko. Visit my office Facebook page and like us. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. Please remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at thereasonswesmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye.
is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588. 